Hi, everybody. It's great to be back doing a little bit of a vlog for you here today. I am going to be talking about something that I actually have been mentioning quite a bit, and it's just been getting pushed and pushed off the plate. So I'm really happy to be doing a little bit of a book review for you um, on Yardsticks. Um, Yardsticks is a book by uh, the author is named Chip Wood, uh, and he talks about books been used quite a bit in education. It's been around for a long time. And one of the reasons I like it is because I think it's a resource that can remind both families as well as teachers about where our kids are, our students are developmentally, and why they might show some of the hallmarks or the behaviors that they do. Um, so for me, it's always been a resource where I will go take a look at what is it saying in yardsticks? Or I'll do an activity with teachers that say, remember that part of the reason that this behavior could be showing up now is because we would actually expect it to show up now. Um, so I thought I would introduce it to you today through this vlog. And I also have some resources that I'm curious to see whether or not you might be interested in taking a look at or having. Um, and that would be, I would be getting that information from you from the extra ticket for your Yardstick blog. So that link is included in News Bytes and after it is meant for after you watch this vlog and then you can kind of go in and inform maybe how we'll use some of our resources as we begin next year to get you some resources around how you might help your school-aged child. So let me share this presentation with you so that you can see it a little bit better. And yardsticks, K to eight, as I already talked about. Uh, it's great for teachers and families. It's easy to read. It grows with your child and it can be a reminder as well. I know I just touched upon that a little bit, but I wanted to make you think about it as like a cheat sheet almost. So you're, you're taking a look at it and kind of popping back into this book um, from time to time and as your kids or your children grow. It talks about the stages of growth and development following a reasonably predictable pattern. So what that means is that uh, children's and adolescents' physical maturation, language acquisition, social and emotional behavior, cognition, ways of approaching the world, they're all examples of areas of development for our kiddos that show patterns. So we can predict that they will be going through certain patterns. I know you've probably heard or people maybe don't say it as much, but the terrible twos, like why are they terrible? And why do some people say, well, my child didn't have terrible twos, they had terrible threes. Well, again, this talks about how the pattern is predictable, even if students go or children go through those patterns at different rates, which will bring us to our next thought. Children and adolescents do not proceed through each phase at the same rate. So when you're thinking about it, they move through the phases at different rates, which helps us to understand why we can expect children in that same, those same three-year age ranges to be broadly similar, but not exactly the same. They may be showing some of the hallmarks when they're four and others when they're five, and even still the, those same hallmarks at six. And you can follow that all the way up through development. And then finally, um, children and adolescents progress through the various aspects of the actual phase at their own rate. So in addition to moving through those phases at different rates, children also might progress through those some, ac some aspects of those phases. So for example, cognitively, a child might develop really quickly while physically he or she might develop pretty slowly and even socially. Um, you know, you might have heard families talk about, I don't know how we cannot send them off to kindergarten. They're so ready to engage academically, but I'm worried about the social piece or they're so sore. He or she is so small um, physically. So, you know, you can see that in, in the different um, aspects of the phases that children are going to move differently, not necessarily all at the same rate. Um, the aspects of development don't necessarily happen at a constant and steady rate as well. So within one of them, let's say we'll talk about physical growth, you might see that your child goes through a growth spurt, right? And then all of a sudden kind of plateaus and their feet stay the same size for a certain number of years. You get a really a lot of wear out of those pair of sneakers. Um, whereas in a different year, you feel like you're continuing to buy them. 
because your ch- your child is just growing at such a rate. Um, the same thing about a burst in knowledge, you know, a brain burst in knowledge. You watch your kids as they develop, men as they develop. Um, reading, for example, all of a sudden they be just become be able to grasp a different level of vocabulary, and then that may plateau for a little while. So it's not a steady rate of progress within each of those. And this yardstick book really helps you kind of grasp what you might see and how you might see it in those areas, that physical growth, that cognitive growth, and social growth. So I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. Social, physical, cognitive. Um, I like to think about it as children just don't suddenly change on their birthdays, right? They turn a certain age and all of a sudden they're displaying the hallmarks of that age. That doesn't, that doesn't happen. We need to remind ourselves of that for sure. Um, but what yardsticks will provide you with is some common characteristics that you can start to look for around the changes in age. And then it also talks a little bit about how you might support what's going on in school at home. This snuck in there. And so did this. Here we go, kindergarten. So um, social, this would give give you an example. I'm I'm gonna talk to you about kindergarten. I'm gonna talk to you about uh, fourth grade and I'm gonna talk to you about eighth grade so you can see some of the different hallmarks and how they describe them. Um, Social, so when you think about a four-year-old, for example, they love being with friends, but they may play near them and not exactly with them. At five years old, they need consistent rules and they respond to clear, simple expectations. And at six years old, enjoy, they enjoy playing games with children and acting out plays. Now, I just gave you one example from social for each of the age levels. There's lots of examples within the, um, the different categories. So you're going to find a whole list for fours, for fives, and for sixes. And you can kind of see where, you know, oh, my child might be doing this from the four-year-old and this from the five-year-old and this from the six-year-old, and that's all okay. But it, you know, it, it gives you those kind of hallmarks of what you might see. It, often give, it also gives you physical, which at four, they're often clumsy. They have collisions. They, they take spills. Um, as they get to five, they should be better at, con- at better control of running and jumping and other large movements. And then at six, they really like lots of physical activity. Finally, cognitive, uh, they learn best by playing at four. At five, they're moving toward trying more new activities and skills. And at six, they're beginning to understand the difference between past and present. So there are some co- examples of what you might find cognitively at kindergarten. Again, lots of information about each one of those, but there's just an example of what it might look like. So when you're thinking about through the years for four-year-olds, five-year-olds, and six-year-olds, it also gives a little bit of description of what that looks like. Um, I will just give you the six-year-old for right now, but I will also point out to you, there's a link inside of Newsling, um, News Bites that gives you the description for four-year-olds through 14-year-olds. So you can take a look at that PDF and use that as um, just a little bit of a description of what you'll get inside a book like Yardsticks. Um, So our six-year-olds, the bodies, minds, and social behavior of six-year-olds are changing dramatically. Sixes have lots of energy, eagerness, curiosity, imagination, drive, openness, and enthusiasm. All are at their peak in the typical six-year-old. And having those little descriptions, I think, helps you to Um, begin to understand where your child might be in in their developmental phase. Fourth grade, Uh, social. When they're eight, they love group activities and cooperative work. Think about that if you have an eight-year-old. When they're nine, they're very competitive, but they might form and they might form some cliques. And when they're 10, it's a good age for clubs and teams and sports and whole class activities. So think about your eight, nine, 10 year olds and think about whether or not that social, those little descriptors describe them socially. Physically, their eyes are able to start to focus really well now at eight. At nine, they start to complain about aches and pains and injuries. And at 10, snacks and rest periods help rapidly growing bodies. So if you're working with a 10 year old and you don't break break for food, (laughs) that's where you get hangry. 
Um, so those are some of the physical descriptions. And then cognitively in fourth grade, um, when, when children are aged, they listen well, but may not always remember what they've heard. They're actually less imaginative than they were when they were eight. And they enjoy collecting and organizing and classifying. There's some fourth grade hallmarks. I won't go through and read what the descriptors are for eight, nine, and 10 in general, but you can see that in the PDF. And then finally, eighth grade. Um, when, when kiddos are 12, peer opinions matter more than teachers and parents do. So if you have a 12 year old, that might be ringing true. 13, feelings are easily hurt and can easily hurt others' feelings. And at 14, they need adult connection. Even when fighting for their own identity, they still want to feel tethered. Physically at 12, very energetic. They need lots of sleep, exercise, and food. At 13, there's lots of physical energy going on. And at 14, most would rather go to school when they're sick so they can be with their peers. They don't want to stay home. They, want their, they really are, are craving that social outlet. And finally, cognitively, they may begin to excel at a particular subject area at 12 years old. They might decide, start to say, I really love ELA. I really love math. I really love science. And th at 13, they're a little more tentative. They're worried. They're not willing to take as many risks. And at 14, they're better at starting at thinking abstractly. They, they understand things like concepts of things like freedom. And there's some examples of what it might look like if you have a 12, 13, or 14 year old hovering around that eighth grade space. Um, next steps. So this was really just a dab into the into what a book like this can do for you and for your for your family. And as you're thinking about why your kiddos are displaying kind of behaviors that they are, uh, I always find it very helpful to review. Um, I'd like you to reach out if you want more information about this. You can obviously, you can just shoot me an email if that works. Um, but I'm also going to be asking you to take out that, take that exit ticket following the presentation. Um, I'm really interested in knowing how many families might, may be interested in a handy pamphlet. So along with Yardsticks comes a pamphlet that gives you those ranges, those three-year ranges, um, which might be a easier resource to digest. Um, and knowing if you're interested in that might help me to think about how we would structure the beginning of the school year next year. I hope this piqued your interest about getting to know a little bit more about where your kids are in their development and why they may be showing some behaviors that they are. I think knowing that children are displaying things that are really um, predictable by phase and that feel normal by phase um, is helpful. Uh, as you're parenting and also as you're trying to make school connections. So I hope that you've enjoyed our vlog about yardsticks. Maybe you'll even decide that that's a book you want to add to your library. And don't forget to fill out that exit ticket. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching.